All right, today I'd like to talk about what baked maps are, why they're important, what their purpose is, and how to create them in Substance Painter. So if I go here to File, I can go to Open Sample. So if you want to follow along, if you have that, you can go to Open Sample. And then they have some samples here. Maybe I'll just go to the Preview Sphere, okay? And if I open that up, it'll give me something to kind of work with, okay? And you can see that here it is. Um, once again, kind of already started and, and here it is. So if I come here, so if this didn't have anything uh, done to it, the way that I would create my maps, okay, let's pretend it doesn't have any of this stuff. Okay, and I'm actually going to go over here and delete all of, um, well, let's see here. I'm going to delete all of these layers here. So I'm just going to go to the trash. There we go. So basically I just have a piece of geometry here. And let's see what baking the maps do. Okay, so if I go to bake mesh maps, I'm going to select my size. I'll just leave it at 2048. And I want it to bake all of these. I'm going to say bake selected textures. Now what it's going to do, it's going to analyze this mesh and it's going to produce these maps right here. Okay, and you can see everything except the color ID was created. And I'll talk about that in a second. But still, what does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this. If, and I'm going to just switch this to 3D and 2D. So here's how the UVs are laid out, and here's our model. Well, let's take a look. If I go like this, I can actually scroll down, and I can see these are the baked maps, okay? And, okay, so the normal map, um, I can see that it's all purple right now, or blue, whatever you want to call this, and really there's nothing too, um, too elaborate about this, and that's because it didn't have a high poly mesh. So if it had a high poly definition mesh assigned to it, then we would actually see something on this one. But since it doesn't, that's why we don't see anything, okay? If I go to this next one, world space normal, okay? If we're looking at this, I can say that um, the bottom of it is pink, the top of it is green, we'll say the front of it is light blue, and, or we can say like that, we can almost looks like a kind of a green light shining on the top and you can see that it's kind of affecting in here, it's affecting in there. I can see the kind of a, this pink light kind of affecting down here and you can see it's also kind of catching in there. And you might say, well, that's not very significant, but what's happening is that that world space normal is applied to this one. So I feel like it kind of looks like just the light is shining on this, but when it translates to the 2D, that's when it becomes more significant. So it's really understanding uh, this model, okay? As far as like um, its position in 3D space, okay? It's in world space. For example, if we would bring this model in and if I would rotate it around, like let's say if I flipped it the other way, it would understand it completely differently Okay, because the light would still shine, like the green light would still shine here, the purple light would still shine here, the blue light would still shine here, but the way that it kind of responds to the model would be different. And that's going to be important because it has to kind of understand where the model is in relative space. And once again, that'll make more sense in a second. Um, ID, there is no ID right now. And the ID, what the ID is, is basically to say this. If I want, I'll just go back to this. If I want this part to be glass, this part to be metal, and this part to be plastic, let's say, then I would have to ID that, meaning that the ID map would look like it would be, you know, some different colors, like solid colors. And that would be done in programs like Maya. You could also export this out. And if you painted this like solid blue, this one solid red, and this one solid green, and then you imported that in, and then you dropped it into the ID map, then you could drag a material. And if you hold down control when you drag it, it would apply it to only where the red part is, wherever you painted red. 
And then if you control drag this, it would apply it where, where you ever you painted green. Okay. Now, if you did something called vertex painting in a different application, when you ba bake the maps, what you would need to do is you need to go to ID and you'd have to make sure your color source is set to vertex color. That's what I normally do. Um, this is something that takes kind of the human eye to figure out because the computer is not going to understand that this should be glass, this should be plastic, and this should be metal. So that is one of the maps that is not going to be automatically generated for us. It needs help. It will be automatically generated for us if we bring it in with vertex color IDs, but right off the bat, it's not going to do that. Okay, so um, that's why that's really the only map that it doesn't generate. Moving on here, if I go to ambient occlusion, what ambient occlusion is, it's finding where the crevices are. Okay, so in other words, if an object, a piece of geometry, is close to another piece of geometry, it's going to produce a shadow. The closer the piece of geometry is to another piece of geometry, the darker the shadow is going to be. And I can see that this piece of geometry is not, or is a little bit farther away from that one. So you can see that um, the shadow is not as pronounced. So um, what would this one be used for? Well, a lot of these, if we have a smart material in here, so if I go to smart materials, I can see that um, something like this one here, I can see that the dirt, like that brown dirt, accumulates in the crevices. How does it accumulate or how does it know where the crevices are? It knows that because of the ambient occlusion map that we're seeing here. So what they're doing is they're using this white and black information as a mask, okay, to kind of find where those crevices are. And whatever you use the crevices for, that's completely up to you. But realize that the computer understands where those crevices are based on this ambient occlusion. If I go to curvature, curvature, I can see that the curvature is understanding where the edges of the model are. So the more severe of edge, like a 90 degree angle edge, the whiter that's going to be. Why are edges important? Well, going back to this example again, I can see that the paint Whoop, hold on here, let me see. If I hover over this, I can see that in this case, the paint chips along the edge. So what they're doing, once again, is they're using the curvature map as a mask to tell the paint where to chip, okay? Um, position, okay? Position is kind of like that world position that we were talking about before, is that it's kind of, hey, it's just shining a light on it. And, um, but I can see that this world position, I can see that it's shining, so it knows that this is kind of facing down, if you will, like this under part is facing down, that's why it's pink, because the light down here is shining up and that's catching there. Where on this one, the position is just saying, hey, this is on top of the model, this is the bottom of the model, you know, this is the side of the model and this is the other side which once again is not that significant but or doesn't seem that big a deal here but when you look at how the colors are translated here that is a big deal. Why would something like that be important? Well let's say if you had a material where snow would accumulate on the top or let's say if you had sun damage on the top in other words it got faded on the top it knows that this is the top of the model you know, where the sun damage would apply. So if the mask calls for understanding the location of, or the position of the model, and once again, if I r physically rotated this position before I baked it, it would change how those colors are, are essentially are affected on that model because this is always going to be the color for the top, always the color for the bottom. And these are going to have play a role in how it understands the position. And then thickness is going to be obviously how thick a model is. So if we think about like um, 
um, I can see that these are super thin, you know, relative to this. This is super thick, um, and and this is a really thin edge here as well. So I, I feel like kind of the best example of this, let's say if you had a character and a human, you brought in a human, they would be pretty thick throughout their entire body except on the ears and maybe the fingertips, maybe even some of the nose. Those would be thinner parts. So a lot of times if you have subsurface scattering, the and if you hold the light up to your finger, it becomes red behind it because it's thin and you can kind of see the blood vessels, that kind of thing. Same with your ear. But if you put a flashlight up to your belly, you're not going to see like red because it's thicker there. Okay. Now that might not necessarily be appropriate for this model. Um, but realize that every model gets analyzed by all of these different maps, the normal, the world space, ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and thickness. So if it needs thickness, it's there for it. And that's why it's kind of called baked maps. Because once again, if I just go here, we're not seeing any of those maps here. But if I apply steel paint to this model, it you can see that it automatically knew to chip right here. Why did it know to chip? Because of the curvature map. How did it know to put the dirt in there? That's because of the ambient occlusion map. And we can kind of prove this by, watch this, if I take out the curvature map, it, it now doesn't know where to chip properly. Okay, it's just kind of more randomly applying it. And then if I took out the ambient occlusion map, now it doesn't even know kind of where to put the dirt. Okay, um, the position map is probably not gonna matter that much. And same with the world space. So you can see that some of those are less important in this case. Um, the thickness isn't going to matter at all. And even the normal is not going to matter. Now you can see that. So that's what that, you know, the material looks like if I just apply it. But once again, if I bake these, so now I'm going to bake it and say, hey, calculate these positions. If I hit bake, it's now going to calculate where the crevices are, where the edges are, where the thickness is. And now, that model automatically responded to it correctly. So let's take a look at why that is. So if we look at, uh, this is the smart material that's applied to it, and if I open this up, um, if we start at the bottom here, so I'm gonna just maybe hide all of this, here's our base metal. Then we have red paint on the top of it, and I can see that that red paint is told to chip at the edges. How is it told to chip? Well, let's take a look at that. If I look at its mask, this mask is, um, is chipping at the edges. How? Well, if I go into my smart masks, I can look at my examples here, and I could find one that is told to chip at the edges. And I don't have to think about, do, should this be you know, curvature map or should it be an ambient inclusion map? No, I don't care. I just want to look at it like from a visual standpoint. And what I'm seeing here is, hey, this one chips at the edges because it's giving me a preview. So that means that if I, if let's say if this red paint did not have a mask here, I could physically just drag this on here and it would to be told to chip at the edges. And that's the result that we're getting here. I can see that this one is just kind of changing the roughness, so that's not really that big a deal. The dirt, however, the dirt is applying in the crevices. Well, how is that possible? Well, you probably guessed it. You can just go to the um, smart masks, and you can find one that is dirt cavities. And what that's doing, once again, behind the scenes, because the... Uh, ambient occlusion map is baked in, they can use the ambient occlusion map to figure out where the dirt goes. So then this uh, was automatically put on here. So that means that dirt will automatically be applied only to where the crevices are. Okay. And now what's neat is that it doesn't matter what the object is that this is placed on. So in other words, 
when you bring in a model, so I'm just going to bring in a different resource. So if I go to import resource, oh no, I'm sorry. I'm just going to go to file, open sample, discard. And I'm going to do something else, maybe um, uh, the Jade Toad open. I'm going to bring this exact material, the steel painted, onto this Jade Toad. Okay, so now what, what's going to happen here is this. If I go to this, I want to make sure that all of these are baked, which they are. So that means that if I bring this in, it should actually respond to this model. So if I drag it on here, I can see that it automatically responded to this model. And I'm just going to, just to make sure that, just to kind of prove this, I'm going to delete all of these. If I drag this on just like this, that's how it responds normally. But if I go here, and I'm going to go ahead and bake everything except the ID, Now I can see that um, that's what we'd expect. Okay, it looks a little bit weirder here because it's, um, you know, I think the other one kind of had more definitive, sharper edges. But I can start to see that my, um, the dirt is kind of accumulating in the crevices. And the paint is chipping on the edges. You can see, once again, the dirt is accumulating here. And if I wanted to see why it's accumulating, I can go look at my um, ambient occlusion map. Whoa, okay, that, that's interesting. So it, oh, it did, not, it did not produce the ambient occlusion map. But if I look at the curvature map, there's my curvature map. And um, it looks like this model, for whatever reason, I, I feel like I would have to um, look at that a little bit closer. Let's bring in a different one. I'm going to go to um, open sample. I'll just bring in, uh, let's see, meet mat, open. Okay, cool. So on this guy here, now this guy, what we have to be careful of is he has different texture sets, so the head, the base, and the body. So I can see that each one of these, are, are everything's already baked out. Okay, so maybe what I'll do is I'll put this material onto the head, oh, we can see that Okay, it's chipping and it's doing everything correctly. I'll put it on the body. Okay, and if I go down here, let's see what it looks like. All right, so it's chipping on the edges. Dirt's accumulating where it should. If I look at the maps, let me see. So there's our curvature map, finding the edges. There's the ambient occlusion map, finding the crevices or co even contact points. I'm mean, not the crevices, but the, um, yeah, the crevices and the, um, areas that are close to one another. And um, now I can see that this one also has the ID. So that's one that we haven't looked at yet. So here's the ID. So that's what you can see what an ID looks like. So that means that if I wanted a different material, this is how easy it is. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to delete the materials that I put on. Okay, and the body, let's see. So now, what I could do is, let's say if I go to the base, and I want this, I'm, I can hold down control, and I can drag it on there, and I can see that, hey, it just applied to where that color was. And then if I grab this, I can hold down control and drag, and then that gets applied. So that's really cool. Now I'll just drag, control drag this one. And by the way, you'll see that when I control drag, I can see that his body is red and so is his head. Those are both red, but when I apply it, it only goes to his body and that's because his body is on a different texture set. So what I could do on this one is I could right click and I could say instantiate across texture sets. And what that's gonna do, I'm gonna click okay, then wherever red is on any other texture set, it's going to apply it to that as well. Okay, so really some cool stuff here. Just drag and drop that on there, and now I'm getting kind of multiple um, things. And each one of these materials, depending on how it's set up, is gonna to be told to respond to the model differently, right? And um, it's just gonna do its thing. So. 
that's what I want you to think about is that it's responding to the model if you have baked maps. If you're not baking your maps in Substance Painter, you almost might as well not be using Substance Painter because you're not getting the benefit out of it. So hopefully that was helpful. Leave any questions, comments below, and make sure to, again, subscribe for videos like this every week. All right, have a good one.